Welcome! Welcome guys for day number five of BBS. Unfortunately, it's the last day, but there's still much fun today. Don't worry. Yes, there is, Emily, and I'm glad that you're letting your friends know that there's still a lot more to come. But today, I hope that you have lots of energy. Of course. I know it's the, it's the last day and it's the fifth day and we've been doing this every day. But I still feel with a lot of energy. And and you know you know why I feel with a lot of energy? Why? Because Jesus' power help us to do great, great things. things. Trust Jesus. Jesus. So why don't we buckle up and let's all sing together. <laughs> There's a spirit I cannot contain There's a spirit I cannot contain The same power that raised Jesus up from the grave The same spirit I cannot contain
Can't seem to find them anywhere. Anyways, we'll just get on with it. I hope you guys like our Bible Buddies because right now we're going to be meeting Lawrence Elk. And I hope you guys find some interesting things about him. Let's go! <laughs> I heard everyone was steaming ahead with the last day of Rocky Railway. Glad you're here. I'm Lawrence Elk. Not a moose, not a ram, but an excellent elk. Male elks are called bulls, and me and my bull buddies like to hang out way up in the Rocky Mountains. In the winter, we move down where we can find grass. But in the spring and summer, we head for the hills. It's important that we stick together with the herd. Some elk herds are as big as 400 friends. Although my antlers are big and strong, female elk or babies don't have these. And a hungry bear is hard to fight off. Speaking of these amazing antlers, they are pretty incredible if I do say so myself. Sometimes they come in handy when other herds get too close to mine. Or I need to show another bull that I'm in charge. Yeah, sometimes we butt heads, even in our happy herd. But I try not to get too attached. Literally, they fall off every year and I grow a new set. How cool is that? God also gave me a unique power to help me communicate with the herd. <clears throat> <clears throat> That's called bugling. It's a little like roaring and whistling at the same time. It keeps my herd close together where we can be safe. Our herd even has scouts. A few elk who stand watch while others graze. We have to look out for each other. Do you have friends who look out for you? Friends you like to call out to when you're sad or silly, happy or hurting? Or do you sometimes butt heads with your buddies? Maybe you need the power to forgive and love a friend when you're not getting along. You don't have to do that all by yourself. Jesus gives you his power to help be a good friend. Jesus gave this powerful command in the Bible. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. If you're butting heads with your buddies and not getting along, you can trust Jesus' power and follow his words. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Trust Jesus! Hey, once again, thank you for joining us. You know, each day, I hope that you are being connected every day. And, uh, you know, I have my Bible book with me. And uh, parents, if you just help your kid just to get familiar with today's story, will be so amazing. So we're going to give you just a little bit of time for you guys to get familiar with today's story. And uh, again, high five to all of you.
are amazing You hold me up with your hand You give me faith And I will put my hope in you alone In you alone God of heaven and earth You are amazing You hold me up with your hand Emily, we're back. Sorry, I had to run because I mean, there were some friends that were needing some help, so I had to go. So, can you give me a high five. Woo! Yay! High five for everybody over there, too. You know, um, we're singing so many different songs, and again, I think I already know them by memory, and hopefully, you do as well. But next, we have a very special guest that's gonna tell us a really cool story. You want to know who that person is? I hope that was a yes. Well, we have Emily. Emily's going to be sharing a story along with Chris. And uh, I can't wait to hear your story, Emily. Yeah, I can't wait to tell it to you guys as well. Can you just tell us just a tiny bit of what you're going to be speaking about? Well, let me just say it's about friendship and Jesus, of course. Well, I guess you cannot tell us that much because otherwise... It will not be a story. So uh, let's just go on to what you have prepared with Chris. One. Hi, everybody. My good friend Emily and I have got a story to tell you. Hi, Emily. Hi. Good to have you here. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay, this is an amazing story. It sure is. This one is one of the strangest, weirdest, craziest stories that Jesus ever tells. That's right. Do you even know what story it is? Of course I do. What story is it? Um, the story of... Hmm. You don't have a clue, do you? Not a one. <sighs> now, it happened in the city of Capernaum. Jesus was going into town, and he had the word that he was there spread all around, and everybody came to hear him. Pretty soon, the news crews were out in everything. What are you doing? Helicopter sounds. Why? Channel 12 News. I, I, I don't think Channel 12 was there. But a big crowd of people were, and pretty soon they crowded into this little house, and there was not a room for a single person more. So they all got into the helicopter? Now, there were these four guys carrying their friend on a mat. Their friend's name was Matt. No, his name was not Matt. He was lying on a mat. 
Then I'm glad I'm not Matt. They were carrying one man on a mat, not a person, a mat. A mat is like a cot, a sleeping bag. They tried to get past all the people in this room. And the guy on the mat couldn't get up because there are too many people. Actually, he couldn't get up because he was paralyzed. He was? Yeah, and his friends were trying to bring him to see Jesus. And they weren't going to let a little thing like a crowded room keep them away. So what'd they do? They climbed up on the roof. Why didn't they just use the helicopter? There was no helicopter. And when they got up on the roof, they started digging through the roof. What? Wait a minute. You're telling me they just started digging through the roof? Yep. The roofs that day were made out of tile and mud, and so they were much easier to dig through. But they tied ropes to this guy's mat. That had to hurt. Matt wasn't a person. What was he? He was on a mat. Oh. Then the paralyzed man's friends started lowering him down through the roof. So they lowered the guy down? Yep. That guy must have been scared of his wits thinking, if these guys aren't careful, I might tip off this mat and land on the ground and break both my legs and be paralyzed for life. Um, he was already paralyzed. And Matt was about to be. No, 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 no. They lowered him right down in front of Jesus. And Jesus saw what faith that his friends had. And he looked at the man and he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. But I thought they brought him to get healed. Well, they did. But Jesus knew that he had to take care of the most important thing first. And it's much more important that you have faith and know that you are forgiven than to be able to walk. Hmm. I never thought of that before. Now, when the Pharisees heard about him say that. What's a swimming ferret have to do with anything? What? You said all the ferrets in the seas. No, no, no. Pharisees. Pharisees were religious rulers in Jesus' day. They weren't very little animals? Nope. Oh. There were people who were very concerned only about following rules. And sometimes they forgot that our faith is what makes us right with God. And not how we meet with a bunch of religious requirements. I thought you said ferrets. Yeah, I know. A ferret is a little furry willing creature. I, I know that. They don't have anything to do with healing paralyzed guys on mats. No, they don't. And they don't live in the oceans either. Can I get on with the story? Yes. Pharisees, very religious, worried about rules. Gotcha. Okay. So when they heard what Jesus said about forgiveness, and they thought, only God can forgive someone's sins. Huh. They were right about that. Yes, they were. And since Jesus claimed that he was forgiving sins, they thought he was God himself. Right. Then Jesus said, it is easier to heal bones than souls. But to show you that I can do the hard things, I'm going to do the easy thing first. Then you'll know that I can really forgive sins. Let me guess. Jesus told the guy, stand up, pick up that mat of yours, and go home. Exactly. And then the man leapt to his feet. He picked up his mat and pushed his way through the crowd. Everyone there was amazed. Right. Especially Matt. Do you practice being confused or do you come by it naturally? I'm naturally gifted. And the people began to praise and thank God. No one had ever seen anything like that before. The mm -hmm. end. Thank you for being good friends. <laughs>
You know, we've been learning so much throughout this week. And uh, first of all, uh, you guys all know Susie and Marty. And, you know, I'm just so thankful for them. Today we're talking about friendship and just, uh, you know, how can we be good friends. And I think we all agree that they've been doing such a great job. And so, uh, Marty and Susie, I just want to thank you guys for just the awesome job that you've been doing, sharing these awesome stories about these kids. And so, I just like the way you are, that you want to know what story they have for us today. I'm also anxious to know what they have. So, why don't we just sit down for a little bit and let's just listen to what they have to share with us today. Welcome back to the Kid Bit Cinema. I can't believe it's our last day together. I've had fun getting to meet all our new friends in KidFit videos each day. Now we're ready to meet one more friend and watch our last KidFit Cinema video. Are you ready? I can't wait to see who we'll meet today. Hi. I'm Renee and I'm 10 years old. Hi, I'm Alina and I'm 11 years old. Renee and Alina are great friends and they live in the beautiful desert of Southern Arizona. They love to hang out and be silly together. Their friendship has grown after they both joined an arts ministry at their church. Um, Ansel's Manos is a creative art ministry. We do puppets, we do shows, we do skits and stuff like that. En sus manos is Spanish for in his hands. It's an art ministry that uses performance to share the love of God. There is dancing, acting, and music. My favorite thing about performing is probably looking like um, at the end looking at like all the kids all smiling and laughing and liking it. Sometimes performances are serious, and sometimes they're fun and silly. Regardless of being silly or not, one thing is true. Being a part of Ansus Manos has brought the entire team closer together. This puppet ministry helped us become better friends. And it's not just like me and her. Like other people? A lot more. Basically the whole group. Our group, like before, like we were all friends, like we were chill, but now we're like, we're like really, really good friends. And like, we're always hanging out. We're always like laughing, making jokes. Jesus has used the ministry to bring the team together. This team of friends help each other to do the best they can to share God's love. My friends, like they help me not be nervous because like they were doing, they were doing it too and they were nervous. But at the same time, they, they supported us. I was with my friends and I knew a lot of people in, from church. So is it that, that scary anymore? Serving Jesus together has helped Lena and Renee become great friends, but they both know who the best friend is, Jesus. He, he's like one of our like bestest friends ever. He is. <laughs> yeah. Renee and Alina know that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Jesus helps me make friends. Um, like God knows that I'm doing like this whole ministry for him and so it just helped me like become better friends with people so he helped me like be friends with a lot of people but still like worship him and praise him. In the Bible in the book of John chapter 15 verse 12 it says love each other in the same way I have loved you. Jesus loved us all equally so we should love everybody because as he says in the Bible, we're all brothers and sisters and love your enemies. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. What's your favorite thing to do with your friends? Share it with a parent or an adult. In your life? What do you look for in a good friend? For me, I like a good friend to be honest and someone that I can trust. What about you? Tell your parent or an adult, what do you look for in a friend? Sometimes I've found in my life it, that friendships don't always work out as well as the friendships that Renee and Alina have. 
sometimes you think someone is a friend, but then something happens to change your mind. Maybe a person that you thought was a friend talked behind your back or made fun of you. Or maybe you hurt a friend's feelings and the friendship ended. Good friendships are special and really important in our lives. But that doesn't mean friendships are always easy. That's why I'm so grateful that Jesus' power helps us to be good friends. Absolutely. You know, <clears throat> the, the Bible has some great advice about friendships. Let's see what the Bible says. Today a verse comes from John 15, 12. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. All week at Rocky Mountain Railway, we've been learning about Jesus' power. And today we're discovering that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. I love that in this Bible verse, Jesus gives us advice about exactly how to be good friends. Jesus tells us to love each other in the same way that he loves us. Let's think back to what we've learned this week and see what we can discover about loving each other like Jesus loves us. On the first day of Kid Vid Cinema, we met Dominic. Dominic loves karate, even though it's hard sometimes. Watching Dominic, we learned that Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Helping us do hard things is one way Jesus shows he loves us. So I guess that means we could be a good friend by helping someone do a hard thing. What's a hard thing you could help a friend with? Tell a parent or an adult. Yeah. Maybe a friend is upset because his parents are getting a divorce. You could be a good listener and encourage your friend to trust Jesus. After Dominic, we met Annalise, who used her music to give her sick grandmother hope. From Annalise, we learned that Jesus' power gives us hope. Jesus shows his love for us by giving us hope. If we can, or if we want to love others like Jesus loves us, we can give someone hope. How can you give a friend hope? What could you do? Share with a parent or an adult. Maybe you could make a card for a friend who's sick telling that friend that you're praying for him or her. That's a great idea. After all at least, we met Lauren, who volunteers in her local community food center. She helped us remember that Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Jesus shows his love for us by helping us to be bold. In our video today, we heard how Renee and Alina helped each other not be nervous before a performance. So that's one way to help a friend be bold. Yesterday we met Isaac, who knows he'll see his brother Joel in heaven someday. Isaac's story can help us remember that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Everyone needs to know about Jesus and his incredible love for us. Telling a friend about Jesus is maybe the best thank you you could ever do for that person. Yeah. Who could you tell about Jesus this week? And what could you say? Yeah. Tell your parent or an adult. Jesus is the best friend of all time. If we listen to him and follow his example, we can be good friends to others. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, your power and your love are amazing. Thank you for being the best friend we'll ever have. And thank you for showing us how to be good friends. Please be with each person here at Rocky Railway as we go into the world to live for you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us this week for Rocky Railway VBS. Yeah.
three, four. Now freeze. And everybody clap your hands. Now stop. Hey everybody, welcome back to day five wrap up. Can you believe it, Emily? I can't believe it myself. Wow, you know, I, I can't believe the five days went by already. But today we just want to take a few minutes just to kind of uh, just remember a little bit of what we learned today. And so did you remember our Bible buddy from today? Yes, it was Lawrence Elk. Great. And you know, he taught us the importance of having good friends and protecting each other, which is very important. You know, just the way they protect each other up in the Rocky Mountains, which is which is awesome, right? It's really awesome. Yes. You know, Jesus' power um, help us to be good friends, and I know he does, right? Yes. Do you have a lot of friends? I do have some friends, yes. Did you have, like, real friends? Yes. And it's Jesus. Great. I was hoping that you would tell me that answer. And I, I hope that you guys also have friends. But remember, the only true friend that you can really count on all the time is Jesus. So that's awesome to know. Now, there was a verse in the Bible in John 15, 12 that says, Love each other in the same way I have loved you. You know, that's so awesome to know, Emily, that not only mom and dad can love us, but also Jesus uh, loves us also the same way that uh, he gave his son Jesus for us to come and, and die for us. And so so we can one day go to heaven, have an eternal life, and live forever. Isn't that amazing? That's really amazing. Yeah, so, you know, um, that was so awesome to know. Now, I want to just take another minute before we close and before we go on is to just do a little review of what we learned each day starting Monday. So uh, I hope that you guys have your cards with you so you can just read them alone and remember what we learned about today. But I want to ask Emily, I want Emily to help us out uh, just to let us know what the theme was for day one, two, three, four, and today's uh, lesson. So let's start off with day number one. Did you remember, Emily? Yes. For day number one, it's Jesus' power helps us to do hard things. Trust Jesus. Jesus. Great job. That's awesome. Day two. Day two is Jesus' power gives us hope. That's right. Trust Jesus. Jesus. We can find hope in Jesus all the time. And day three. Jesus' power helps us to be bold. That's right. You know, we can make a difference in our community or make a difference in our houses helping mom and dad. So you're right, Emily. That's that's just uh, the way it is. What about day four? Day four is Jesus' power lets us live forever. Whoa, forever. That's so awesome. And you know, that's so true. We can find peace. We can find the answers only in Jesus. And what about today's? For today's, it's Jesus' power helps us to be good friends. That's so true. And you know, I hope that you guys are good friends with other kids and just be nice to everybody because that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to be good friends. So Emily, I'm so glad that you were able to learn everything throughout these five days and I hope that you did too and uh, give each other a high five. It was so nice to be your host throughout these five, five days and uh, thank you Emily for everything you did. Yep, thank you. Awesome. We'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, we've come to the end. It is your last day, and this by far is gonna be the most fun craft you've ever done. I know it. So inside of it, you're going to find the instructions. It's called ice cream in a bag. Who doesn't like ice cream? Ice cream on a Friday. It's perfect. All right, so you're going to need some things for this craft. You're going to need a something that measures out a whole cup. So go and find a one cup uh, measuring cup. You also need to find a one and a half teaspoon and a little bowl or something to put it in for one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. And then you're going to need one tablespoon of sugar. And here's my ice. And then one fourth cup of salt. Okay? 
The other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need two Ziploc baggies. You're gonna need a large one and a small one. So yes, here are your two bags. You're going to need one small bag and one big bag, okay? So let's smart, start with the small bag because that's, yeah. So let's start, okay? So you're going to take that one cup of half and half. Here's what it looks like at the, at the store, half and half. I got it at Red Apple. And you're going to pour that one cup of milk into the smaller baggie. And then you're going to take the vanilla, the one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and you're gonna pour it in. And you're going to take the one tablespoon of sugar. You're gonna pour that in the little Ziploc baggie. And then you're going to seal it up and seal it good. Make sure that there's no air in it. See how she's squeezing? to make sure there's no air in that Ziploc baggie. Look at her, she's doing such a great job. You're such a good helper. There we go, see, look at her bag. Look at how there's no air in there practically and it's all ziploc You gotta make sure that it's ziploc tight or else the ice cream's gonna come out and it'll be all over everything else. All right, and then in your big bag, we're going to take some ice. I don't know if I'm gonna to try to dump it. I think I'm just gonna put it in okay. here and then I'll dump it the rest of the way. So I'm gonna fill this up. I'm gonna fill it in. Don't worry, it's just water. So if it gets everywhere, it's just ice. There we go. There it is, okay. So you take that ice, don't we need the salt? Yeah. All right, so there we go. See how she did that? She's putting the ice around that little baggie in the inside. Isn't that great? Okay, so now I have the one fourth cup of salt and I'm gonna pour it on both sides of the bag around the outside of the other bag. Okay, so look at that. Inside you have the Ziploc baggie with all the stuff in it with with the sugar and the and the half and half and the vanilla and then you have the ice around the outside with the salt around the bag okay then you're going to tighten it up really tight like she did on the last one see I let the air out and then I tightened it really tight so that nothing comes out make sure and double check it okay so now if your hands get cold you can go in and get your mom's um, oven mitts if not you can just sit here and you're gonna shake it. Set your timer for six minutes. So that's a long time. So shake, shake, shake. Keep shaking. You're gonna keep shaking and shaking. Now I'm not gonna finish it because I don't have six minutes to sit here and do it, but you wanna shake it for six minutes. You can't just set it down and expect to get ice cream. You gotta shake it just like this. Take it hard. Okay, so after six minutes, you're going to take it out, unzip it, take your little baggie out, and you should have solid ice cream. If you don't have solid ice cream, put the baggie back in, zip it up again, and shake it for longer because you might not have done the full six minutes of shaking. So go back to the shaking stick, okay? So that is your ice cream thing. So as soon as you have six minutes in it and it doesn't look like ice cream, don't worry. Keep shaking it and you will get ice cream, I promise. Okay, last but not least, just for something while you're eating your ice cream, you've got a color packet in here and you can cut off the ice cream cone tops and there's your ice cream cone bottom. And then after you've colored it, you can put it together so there you go, there's your bag. After six minutes of heavy shaking, not light shaking, heavy shaking, you will have ice cream. All right, so that concludes your ice cream day. I hope that you've had a ton of fun. I know I have. And I hope that the rest of your weekend is going to be amazing, maybe get some time in the lake. I have totally enjoyed doing crafts with you. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. And I wish you nothing but the best, and we can't wait to see you next year. See you later. All right, we're back, Emily. Yay!
Yeah. But this time, there will be no tomorrow. Today is our last day. You know, how do you feel about it? You know, at first, I didn't feel that as confident. But after this whole VBS, I feel so confident about Jesus being there with me the whole time. Wow, you know that. Thank you for sharing that. And I hope that you guys feel the same way. That, you know, if you didn't feel as confident as before, that right now you understand that Jesus loves you very much. And he just, he's there that, to, to be with you. And you can trust Jesus at all times, right? Yes. Awesome. Trust Jesus. Awesome. That's so awesome. Thank you for reminding us again. You know, um, it was a pleasure to be your host. And, and Emily, thank you so much. High five again. Great job. You know, uh, we send you guys a high five also. We really appreciate it. And, and, and I hope that you guys, you know, got to watch um, all this five days. And if not, you can replay them again. But I just want to thank the Lord for each and one of you. And uh, why don't we just do a prayer before we close? Yeah. Let's just do that. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for today. I just want to thank you for every kid that's watching. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving your life on the cross and for helping me to be more bold and to give me hope. God, we love you and we give you our lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's just finish up with the song and uh, we'll see you guys next time, all right? Bye-bye. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Spaces for